No. <laughs> Take two. Without the shrug at the end. Did I shrug? No. You did. Well, I didn't know. Okay, that take three now or what? I'm just trying to get my thoughts in order. No blooper reels. Okay. Start over. Well, you want to say it? No. We're Dale and Charlotte. What are we? <clears throat> get the goose out of here. We are Dale and Charlotte Schwanke. We operate and own Red Barn Family Farm, where we produce lambs for local and other markets. Well, we have a Red Barn, and we have a family, <laughs> and we have a farm. I mean, it just kind of rolled off. We, we debated, you know, it was, it's always hard to name a farm, but... I was born and raised in Wadena, which is a town 20 minutes away, and I was raised on this farm and have been here my whole life. I don't know if I'll ever move until they have to carry me away. We were friends for quite a few years, and then I moved to Calgary to pursue interior design, and then the letters started coming, and the phone calls got expensive, and then uh, we eventually got married, and here we are on the farm. This is my grandparents' original homestead, and my father also farmed here, and I began, began farming and started farming mostly grain. For a lot of years, I actually ran my own business um, as an interior designer. Um, the neighbor's house next door was one of my projects. And then as, after I got married to Charlotte, we uh, diversified into sheep and began producing Saskatchewan's best lamb. For years when we were grain farming, the barn didn't get any use. By adding the sheep to the farm, all of a sudden we had this barn that was just full of life and, and kind of the center of, of the farm. We had our first kiss in the barn. Grain farming was getting to be so intense, intense in so many ways. So much money you're putting into the ground, so much um, dependence on weather and when it rains, when it doesn't rain, it, it, you have no control over that. Also commodity prices are, when you're raising a commodity, you have no control over how much you receive in terms of your sales and what, what products you produce. I used to be a walking nut case and basket case this time of year. If I heard a cedar going, I'd be going out of my mind if I wasn't ready or if I felt a little behind. We just had no control in grain farming over just about anything. And so we decided to go towards something that we could market direct to the consumer to avoid all those pitfalls and to avoid, I mean, we still rely on weather as sheep farmers because we need hay and pasture, but not at the same way as as with grain, if we run out of hay, we can buy hay. We removed a lot of those barriers and a lot of the difficulties with control because now we're controlling the price that we sell our product for. We're controlling when we sell it. We've regained control of, of basically our farming destiny because of how we farm. Sheep are more productive than a cow in terms of the pounds per acre you're gonna produce of actual meat because there's so much beef out there, whereas there's just not as much lamb available. And so that's our goal is to make, make it available to people who are looking for the best lamb in Saskatchewan. Sheep are more manageable in a lot of ways in terms of the size of the facilities you need. You don't need to build huge fences and huge corrals. You could use smaller uh, handling systems and smaller panning systems. If I need to, doctor a sheep, I'd grab the sheep and tip it on its bum and give it a needle. I'd like to see you try that with a cow. <laughs> but it was, so it ended up being a financial decision too where it was, it was economical to get into sheep. It was something that we could build into, we didn't have to finance. Which again goes to control. We don't have reliance on a bank to control our lives basically in terms of what we're producing. We don't owe anybody anything for what we're producing. Our kids have all, because they're all part of the farm, and they're all little egg entrepreneurs in their own right, but they have all done different projects of their own. I think the kids are learning a different way to farm, that you don't all have to farm the same and do the same thing. There's different things you can do on a farm. It doesn't all have to be grand fields of grain. We're always open to trying new things. If someone came to us and said, we need 350 quail eggs a week, I'd, I'd go for it. Well, it's great to have, you know, your hand in all kinds of different things, but, but also, too, we have to maintain our standards and maintain the quality and the customer service, and, and there's only two of us to, to do all the barn work and all the marketing and, you know, filling orders, all that kind of stuff, so it takes a lot. We have nine quarters of land, and about half of it we've rented out to a neighbouring grain farmer, and the rest is hay and pasture, basically. 
At times when we need it, we raise our own grain that, for feeding the sheep grain. We have a relatively small land base by today's standards and the way land prices have been and, and such, it's just about impossible to get more land unless you have lots to begin with. And so we're doing the best we can with what we have and I think sheep fit into that very well. And then it's managed largely by Dale in the winter. I don't like to be cold, so he goes out and does chores every day, all day kind of thing. She forgets we have sheep in the winter and then spring comes and she comes alive. <laughs> This is my favorite time of year when the lambing is happening because she I'm comes out here alive. all the time. An ongoing challenge because we've been growing too many sheep for how quick we can fence more pasture land. And so the long-term plan would be to be intensively managing the grazing by putting them on small pieces of land and moving them. We have a really good butcher. He will do anything for us. We've had some interesting orders for sure. It's amazing what people can do with lamb. We've come up with our own products too that, you know, because a lot of people say they don't know how to cook lamb. And the other side of it, I guess, too, is that they can't find good lamb. Remember, they only see it on a restaurant menu. So we're here to say, hey, we have lamb available. And then also that um, we have products that we have created to make lamb, I guess, accessible or cookable, you know, for like a weeknight meal. That are affordable too, you know. One of our favorite things as a family is uh, we have lamb meatballs and they're frozen meatballs that come in a package and um, in 25 minutes you can have them through the oven onto, you know, a plate. So when we're at farmer's market I always tell people like it's a great option. The other thing, we want to differentiate ourselves from other lamb producers so that we have 10 or 12 different products that other people don't carry and so that people will come to us because, oh, we want to try this kind of product from our lamb rather than just, you know, two or three chops. Often people think lamb is a premium thing, but our grocery store, our prices are about the same as the grocery store. So we do a lot of just like direct marketing, you know, people will reach out to us and um, we we say, yeah, what, you know, take their order and, and make it happen, um, whether it's through couriers or trips to the city or um, we keep the stock freezer in Regina at my parents' garage, so they're often delivering lamb for us. We do a lot of farmer's markets, but Regina Farmer's Market has been a big, fantastic opportunity just to meet people, right? Like that's been part of the whole thing about farming this way is just we love making those connections. We're in a couple retailers all over Saskatchewan, and then we have it in restaurants. So if there's a demand for, you know, if somebody wants lamb, we will find a way to get it there. Um, we're pretty confident that we're the only producers in Saskatchewan that are doing all the different products that we are on the scale that we are too. So many times that when we're at farmers market people will come up to us and kind of sometimes turn up their noses to lamb even because they've had a bad experience from New Zealand or Australia or maybe they had they didn't have mutton and lamb at all but they had mutton and so my favorite thing is to offer them a sample, which we often have when we're at market. The best thing is when they come back to the booth and they end up saying, this is really good, we'd like to buy some. And it's, it's having that interaction with the consumers is awesome. Our lamb is a completely different product than what most lamb is available in the grocery store, which is New Zealand or Australian lamb. And ours, it doesn't even, like it's not even the same. That is not, first of all, fresh lamb. It can't be fresh lamb. If you buy Red Barn Family Farm lamb, it was raised here, it was born here. Red Barn Family Farm is lamb, is Red Barn Family Farm lamb. Today's society is an environmentally conscious society, and if you're gonna be eating things that have been produced locally, you're quote unquote, being environmentally friendly and a good steward of the landscape around you. Financially, it's you're not putting out a whole bunch of money every spring hoping you're going to get it back in the fall. The highest input is, is actually processing for us, but it's not the intense hundreds of thousands of dollars you're throwing at something that you have no idea if you're going to end up getting it back in the end. We always say we're actually not real sheep farmers because we name all our ewes, like all our, all our mom sheep have um, names. Mom sheep? Mom sheep. You're this not a sheep <laughs> farmer, you're calling them mom sheep, no. Dad. Let's just say it's embarrassing taking some of our sheep to the vet because of their name tag. Lois, Lorraine, Loretta, yeah. any ideas out there? I think it just goes back to like our farm, our the barn being um, central but this has been something that we've built together as a family and then offered it and shared it with so many people all over Saskatchewan. Now I just sort of smile because 
my farm is quiet, other than the sheep, but it's, it's you know, a quiet place. It's a more sustainable place, I think. We leave a lot of the land intact. It's just a whole shift in how our farm has gone from intense, trying hard, high input farming to lower input, more relaxed farming. This goose is really distracting me. He's never done this before. Wait, I, um, should I send it away? I, I kind of like it. Um. If you have program ideas you'd like to see on Max TV Local, let us know at sastel.com slash local. Thank <laughs> you.